Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought we'd have some fun and create a little seasonal or festive decoration, ornament or bauble. These are based around glass baubles and I've done one here which is about roughly about six centimetres and these ones are done in the larger seven centimetre size. For this one it's just a bit of fun covering the bauble with using some metallic leaf and then a few very easy polymer clay canes. You can add as many as you want or as few as you want and just simply make them your own. And I've just added a little extra bling with some sparkles so wherever you hang them they will sparkle nicely as they catch the light. The equipment we're going to be using is fairly straightforward for polymer clay. I'll be using a polymer clay blade, I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades a craft knife, a small roller, this one's about half inch, 1.25 centimetres in diameter. I'll be using this cable needle, which is four millimetres, but something along these lines is absolutely fine. I'm just using this just to smooth areas of clay together as we put the clay around the bauble. Talking of which, I am using a glass bauble or glass ornament. Um, these are the ones where you can pull out the tops, be careful when you're using these because quite often the glass around here is sharp so don't get your fingers inside or do anything. And because I've had them many years they're starting to look a bit tatty and sort of the, the colours scratching off in parts so I thought I would upcycle them, reuse them and cover them in a decorative polymer clay finish. So that's what I'll be using and when I'm using it obviously I'll take this out, keep this to one side and once our piece is finished I can put that back in and the bauble will be finished. And because it's a round shape when I'm baking I'm just going to bake in one of these moulds. This is just a half sphere mould. These are quite easily available from cooking shops um, and baking shops and obviously online retailers will have them as well. To create the decorative shimmer on the outside of the bauble, I'm actually going to be using metal leaf. Now, most people know of the metal leaf you can get in sort of sheets like this, and you get it in silver or gold or bronze, and sometimes in mixed um, sheets. And that's what I am going to be using today, because this is widely available and very easy to get hold of and relatively cheap. Obviously, this isn't real gold or silver leaf. This is the, um, the faux metallic leaf. But what you can also get nowadays, and I was exceedingly lucky that a good friend gave me some of these for my birthday, are some coloured metal leaf sheets. Now, I've used some of these in the baubles that I'm going to show you later on in the video with other colour combinations, um, but I haven't used it in the main one, as I say, because they're not, at the moment, widely available. However, I'm aware of somewhere where they, hopefully by the time you watch this video, they will be in stock, but certainly they're going to be in stock soon, and I'll put a link to that um, where you can get them in the UK in the video details below. But say, obviously, lots of lovely bright colours which work really well for seasonal decorations and all your other polymer clay needs blue one there, see if I can open it up so you can see. There we go. But as with all metallic leaf, it's a very flyaway, which is why it's handy that it comes inside these sheets. For additional bling, I'm going to use some of these little rhinestone, what I call, chatons, which are the little crystals with the diamond or the pointed backs. So if you can still see that, so they've got little pointed backs on them and they then sit and embed into the clay and then because they've embedded nicely into the clay they should be stay put after you've finished baking or curing your piece. If however you don't have these and these are four millimeter ones and as you'll see when I show you the other examples I use them in lots of other colors as well you can of course just simply use the stick on diamante ones which come in a variety of colors variety of sizes however these would need to be put on once the piece has finished baking or curing so when I'm doing the bauble and I show you where I put the divot in to stick these ones in what you would actually do is just leave a little flat space instead and then just simply stick these on once the piece is cooled from baking. I just use a measuring sheet just to give you some guide for sizes you don't really need it but for those of you who want it this one is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net and this is the four squares to one inch and I've simply laminated it but you can of course get it in centimeters instead if you would prefer. Other than that I have a big tile that I work on um, I will use foil to wrap around the bowl when I'm actually baking my piece, so to tent that bauble inside, so it's not actually touching the bauble, but just sits proud, and that just helps protect the clay if, for any reason, your oven spiked in temperature during baking. 
I will be using biodegradable wet wipes to clean and wipe my hands and work surface as I go along and then just some tissues to dry off anything I use and of course I also use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. If you do not have a pasta machine you can simply get um, stacks of equal numbers of playing cards, stack them up on either side of your clay and simply roll over the top until you get your clay to the desired size. So that is all the equipment we need, let's move on to the clay. So it's a fairly simple design we're doing today, so fairly simple amount of clay we're going to need. I'm using Fimo Soft, but any of the recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. For the background colour, I'm using Plum, and I've got 1 ounce or 28 grams of this colour. To make the leaf, I'm using Windsor Blue, Royal Violet, Raspberry and Lavender. And I've got half an ounce or 14 grams of the Windsor Blue, 7 grams or quarter of an ounce of each of these three colours. And then to make the petals for the flower I'm simply using white and lavender and again for these I've got quarter of an ounce or seven grams. I will put all the clay through and condition it using my pasta machine in these separate amounts so I end up with blocks of these colours and I will condition it and put it through on setting number 3 which on my machine is a medium setting and on my machine 0 is thick and 9 is thin. So we will start with the background so I'm going to get all the clay conditioned first and I'll bring you back when I've got that done and I say we'll start with the plum colour and the silver leaf and then we'll create the base for our decorated bauble. So here's all the clay fully conditioned and if you're unsure about conditioning clay then I do have a video with a few hints and tips on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. But we'll start with our plum colour because that's what we're going to cover the outside of the bauble with. If you wanted a complete silver sheen on your piece so you didn't want to see the underneath clay at all then the way to do that is to get your clay exactly the right size to start with and then add the silver leaf to it. However I want a bit of a crackle effect. Now the thicker you put this sheet to start with and the thicker it is when you put the silver uh, metallic leaf on it then as you go down through the setting sizes of the pasta machine and get this thinner and thinner obviously the more crackle effect you're going to have. I quite like the sort of in-between effect where you see the metallic and you see the crackle but you also see a little hint of the colour underneath and from experience I've learnt that that works well if I put that on setting one of my pasta machines, so one down on the thickest setting. And what I don't want to do is to have it the right height to start with. Because again, if I have this the right height, so only put it through in one direction of the pasta machine, the crackle will only spread out in one direction, so it will end up giving me um, vertical stripes that go down the whole piece. I'm looking for more of a square crackle where I get going that way and that way. So it's definitely not wide enough to go around, and it's not long enough to go around that way. So that but it is, just checking, yep, it is still thin enough that it can go through the width of my pasta machine. So having got that size, I will put it on the measuring sheet just to make it easier to get off in a second and very carefully put the silver leaf Onto the, crack, onto the clay and of course you don't need to worry about any cracks or crackles because that's the effect we're going for. So just gently smooth it down, you can patch any bits that are missing, it does have a tendency to stick to the finger anyway but where the clay is missing hopefully it will stick down on that instead. And then either tear or gently with your knife remove the excess and that can go back to be used for another project. So I can now remove my piece. I tend to fold the excess underneath slightly so it doesn't get stuck in the pasta machine because it's not going to stop the ability to stick to the bauble. And I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine that way to start with for a couple of turns. So this is on setting one at the moment. So the next time one down, I'll go down onto setting number two. So that just 
just gives the very slightest crackle. Um, I'm going to do the same going through setting number three because I've still got it at a width where it will fit through the pasta machine. You can see there the crackle starting to come and now I'm going to look at the height and I've actually got the, the right height to fit round the bauble so that's fine. So now I can start putting it through that way. So I'm going to go down to setting number four. Which gives us that effect and I'm going to go down to number five which gives us that effect and you see the um, purple starting to show through now I have actually got enough there to go round but I like to do it nice and thin I want a little bit more crackle so I'm going to go down on setting number six again still going through this way so now I'm happy because I've got that silver sheen but I've got a nice amount of purple sort of coming through so it's going to give me that look and I know it's the right height and it's definitely more than enough length so I'm just going to chop one end off flat and because we're going to put this the whole way around our ornament we don't need any liquid clay underneath I'll just get rid of that hair there we go and all I'm going to do is put it on one part make sure I've got enough to go up to the neck and down to the middle and then very gently just put it round and I'm going to pull it ever so slightly because that little pull helps it adhere to the outside and then when you get to where it joins can you see there you can actually see where it's gone up next to the thing now you want to cut just fractionally smaller so just inside that line you see I just sort of tear the extra bits because now you've got it you can peel that off and you can carefully place it right up next to the join because what you don't want if you can avoid it is to have a line of purple so if you move it by hand you can generally put it together so that the silver is going to join up and then with a nice clean cable needle going in the same direction that the silver goes just gently go over the joins we're going to smooth that with a roller in a minute so don't worry about that then either starting at the neck or the bottom whichever you prefer I'll start at the neck we simply press the clay down and wherever it starts to um, overlap or bulge out just take your craft knife down pull the clay away and then press it flat to where it overlaps and again you can see where that overlap is so you can cut down there and then again very gently with your needle roll over the join if you get a big gap then you can pick up the clay and just stretch it until it joins and meets Let's see if I can do that for you to show you so I'm cutting it quite wide here I think Yes, so you can see there we've got a bit of a, a gap. That's absolutely fine. So you can just persuade it with your fingers just to join up. And then, as before, go over it with a cable needle or whichever other tool you're using just to smooth your joints. And I'm going to continue in that way all the way around the neck and then do exactly the same at the bottom. So when you do it to the bottom, it literally is a repeat of the performance so everywhere you have an overlap just pull the overlap off persuade the two lines of clay to join up and then smooth them together but so I would suggest doing one end first and then the other and I will speed up go around that and show you it in fast motion
So as you saw there, I must admit I tend to cut first and then put all the um, seams, join them together afterwards. If you find you've got a bit missing, then you'll have enough pieces, you can always patch a piece in. Um, if you can, I would suggest not trying to add, if you've got a piece that where you've got a lot missing, not to add a piece of um, just uncrackled silver leaf back in. It does tend to um, really stand out quite a lip because it hasn't gone quite as thin or as um, crackled as the rest of it. When you've done all the pieces, you can then neaten off the top just by cutting off the excess around the neck. And of course, if you want to, you don't have to add any decoration to this. If you like a crackle effect bauble, then simply stop at that stage. But I am just going to finesse it slightly more and then we'll add all our extra bits. I'm just going to clean my hands to start with because I have got silver leaf everywhere. Then with a nice clean roller, I'm just going to roll over. Now that's what I wanted. If you see when you've joined, you've got a little bubble. I don't know if you can see there's a little bubble. So either with your craft knife or a needle, just draw a little line and very gently roll the clay towards the bubble and you can close it over so it now is no longer a bubble because you don't want any of those when you're baking because um, when it cures in the oven any air trapped will obviously expand and you would end up with a raised bubble on the outside of your ornament. Other thing to think about is don't worry about any um, areas that look particularly messy remember we're going to cover this over with lots of decoration um, so any areas that don't look too good that's absolutely fine. So roll over either with one of these rollers or a brayer roller if you have one and then what I normally do just to give it a final little sort of round off is I just roll it very fast in a circular motion on my tile. Again making sure if you've got a sharp top you don't get your hand anywhere near that. And that generally gives you quite a nice smooth finish and our piece is ready to decorate. So the next thing to do is to make a petal cane and we're going to do that with the lavender and the white. And I've got, as you can see, extremely rough rectangular shapes. And I'm simply going to cut diagonally through those, lay the two pieces on top and put them back together so you've got that diagonal down the middle. Anyone new to Skinner Blends, I do have a video tutorial on this and I'll put a link to that in the video description below this one. Having put that up, I will just fold that up so that those pieces are going to stick and I will create more of a point at that stage so when it goes through the pasta machine it's not going to force the um, pasta machine rollers too much and because I've got four layers here I'm going to put it on one thicker setting, setting number two on my pasta machine and I'll keep putting it through until I've ended up with a blend as it goes through, fold bottom to top, put back through, bottom to top, put back through. And I will repeat that until I've got a nice blend across the width of this piece. And I'll bring you back when that's done. Once you've got your blend done, you can cut it into two pieces. Lay one on top of the other. And I'll put it back through the pasta machine, dark end first, on that same setting number two to give myself a longer, thinner strip. And now I want the longest, thinnest strip I can get. So for me, I will go straight down to setting number nine, which is my thinnest usable setting on my pasta machine. But if you know from experience that your pasta machine shreds or tears your clay, simply go down one step at a time to your thinnest usable setting on the pasta machine. And I'll bring you back when I've got mine done. And now we're simply going to roll from the dark end up to the light. And when I'm rolling, I'm keeping it nice and tight, making sure there's no trapped air as we go. So we end up with the light on the outside and the dark on the middle. And then I'm simply going to quarter down the circle. And don't worry too much about being neat on this case because we're going to make petals here and if every petal is slightly different, that's absolutely fine. And all I'm doing is I'm pulling up the edges. You can see there I'm wrapping the white round the outside and then I'm going to push the middle bit so it's flatter so we get a thinner piece. Do that on two pieces at a time. Put those two together and you can see they've got hugely different sizes. It really doesn't matter on this one. Same with number three and with number four. Then push all four pieces together. Once they're together at the bottom, 
you can pull over the tops. And I'm just flattening down whilst keeping my hands to stop it sort of progressing too much out that side. So you end up with slightly neat piece. And then simply chop down in the middle and put the two pieces together. And that will be our petal. Now you can see there we've got a diamond shape. I'm just going to reinforce that by pressing down with my thumb and fingers until it effectively is going to create a square. And once we've got it roughly square shape, I'm going to reduce that in that square. By pressing it, it automatically makes it go longer, but the pattern remains the same all the way through the middle. Now we've got enough petal cane here to do probably sort of certainly two, maybe three or even four baubles, depending on how you decorate them. And as I said at the beginning, how you decorate them is completely up to you. I just show you one example here, but what you then do is up to you and your imagination. What I will do when it gets to the stage of about just over half an inch, I'm just going to chop that in two and just reduce one half of it. But you can see there the petal design that's starting to come through. And then with this one, I'm going to go down till it's really quite small. And I might well chop it in half again. You can either work on the tile to get it nicely down and a square shape, or if you'd rather, you can do it up in the air, whichever you prefer. Once it's gone down smaller again, I will generally chop in half again, so that each time I'm only reducing a small amount. And now I've got it down, I will start doing it with my fingers in the air. And I'm sort of getting it down to just over um, about a quarter of an inch size, so probably about half a centimetre, um, just over half a centimetre. And when you've got it down to a size you want in that square shape, I'm going to keep the bottom towards me and I'm just going to round off all the way down the edge. So round off the pointed sides. And you can push it in a bit smaller again with your fingers. You can also, if you want to, round off the bottom just by rolling it slightly on the edge. And when you're done, just slice neatly through one end so you can see the size and design on the petal. So that's me done. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to cut 15 slices and because we're going to add them just on the outside of the wall, they can be as thin as you can make them. Um, also, do it in a size that's comfortable for you, but to be honest, the thinner you can get them, the better for this. This, this is a good chance to practice cutting your cane slices. So I will do a couple on camera and then I will move off camera because I tend to do it with my head right over the top so I can get nice thin slices. But if you can get something about that sort of size that'll be lovely and that will work for what we're doing. So I will do 15 slices and I'll bring you back when I've got those done. So those are my slices and for the pattern I'm going to do today first thing I will look and see if there's a particular area of the crackle which I'm not happy with and then whichever area looks messiest that's where I'm going to start. And my first piece will go probably about just over half an inch down from the neck and the great thing about working on the crackle is the clay doesn't tend to stick straight away so you can pull these pieces off and manoeuvre them if you need to. And then I'm simply going to put five slices round, not quite meeting at the middle. As I say, if you're not happy with one, you can just get it up and manoeuvre it. So that's your first one. We leave a gap in the middle because that's where the um, little sparkle is going to go. And then the next one, I'll start off to one side. The other great thing about having the um, silver leaf on is that I can touch this, although I'm holding it very, very gently, I can touch it and I won't get much in the way of fingerprints. So whenever you're working around the ball, well if you can, try and keep your hand, if it's not a sharp up here, then obviously you can keep it there 
and on the bottom of the bauble but if you try and keep your fingers on where the silver metal leaf is then you're not going to get much in the way of fingerprints and my last one for this set of three will go about there Okay, so there's the first three. I'm now going to look at my cane, because quite often when you've cut your slices it becomes distorted, so I'm going to re-shape um, the cane to make sure it's still that nice shape. And then I'm going to do another three, starting sort of like a third around. So the next three will come here, and then a final three there. So we'll end up with three sets of these around the outside of the bauble. So I'll get that done and bring you back when I've reached that stage. So there we are. There's our three sets of flowers put round. And of course, again, as I said, if you don't want to put any leaves on, you can just leave it at this stage. You could add more um, flowers on, and I'll show you one at the end where I only put the um, petals and the flowers on with no leaves whatsoever. Um, but if you want to do leaves, I will show you how to do that next. So put this on one side. So this leaf involves a three-way Skinner blend. I'm going to use the lavender, the raspberry, and the royal violet. And when you're doing a three-way, the easiest way to do it is diagonally through the end pieces, singly down the middle piece or straight down the middle of the middle piece. Put those together, put those on top. Just as we did previously, we're going to fold up because they are all on setting number three, exactly the same as before. Pinch the end, put it through on a thicker setting as so the setting number two until you end up with a nice blend from one end to the other. So this leaf cane is based on something I did many years ago now when I did a poinsettia cane um, for a, a bead magazine. But I've just changed it slightly um, and this time rather than just doing a plain colour we are doing a Skinner blend. And it creates quite a nice fun leaf so I do use this one quite a lot. As I say I will bring you back when we've got it to the stage of its blended. So there we go with our nice blended piece and what I've been doing is I want a piece that's about two inches or five centimetres wide because I want to end up with a piece that's about one inch or two and a half centimetres wide so that when I fold this in half and put it back through the pasta machine that way I will end up with a piece that is about one inch. So I'm just going to fold that a little bit more neatly. Something about like that. And I did that in the pasta machine was when I put it in as I put it in, I just pulled it slightly wider until I ended up with a piece that was a nice oblong, say about two inches wide. So I want a piece now that's going to be six or seven inches long, but only about that one inch wide. So what I'm going to do, it's got two thicknesses of setting number two here. So I'm now going to put this through on my thickest setting, setting naught, and put it through that way in and see what length of piece I'm going to get on that setting. So setting naught, and we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is perfect for what I need. So I'm going to chop off the end pieces. And just very roughly go about, about an inch. It doesn't have to be exact, but you're going to want to put something on the inside of this. So if you've got a measurement that's easy to replicate, that is good. Having done that, I'm simply going to chop this into seven pieces, about one inch, two and a half centimetres wide. And then to do the veins of the leaf, I'm going to use the um, Windsor Blue that we had earlier. And I'm going to fold this, it's already been conditioned, but I'm going to fold it into a piece so that it'll be wide enough to fit on this piece and put it back through the pasta machine. Um, and I'll start on quite a thick setting because it's got quite a wadge of clay here. So I'll start on setting number two and see what we've got. Yes, even with the raggedy bits, that'll be enough to fit on top. So now I want this quite thin, so I'm going to put it all the way down to setting number seven on my pasta machine, so a nice thin sheet. Again, that way through, so I end up with a very long piece. OK, so I can now sit it on the measuring sheet, cut off one end, cut off the end, that's going to be level with the rest of your um, leaf bits. We've got more than enough here to wrap around the outside in a minute. And I'm going to try and replicate very roughly the size we've got. So I'll take those bits off the top there. So 
So it doesn't have to be exact, but just roughly. If you can always trim off any excess. And then I'm going to cut six pieces, but not quite as wide. So instead of being a whole inch wide, I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. And then lay them in the middle of the piece on top so you've got a bit of excess either side and then just start stacking them up and laying these pieces in the middle but end up with one of the pink on the outside not with the blue on the outside. And then we have a nice block of colour. And all we're going to do is we're going to set it on its end and we're going to cut down diagonally but not quite to the corners. So you can see there, I've got a bit left on the either side. Chop straight down through the whole block because when you put them together, you will effectively have a leaf shape. So take a little excess of the blue here, put it not quite up to the top, just slightly, so not on that bit, just to the top of your stack there and chop the end off. So that's our middle piece and then put those two pieces together and I must admit I like the fact that you've then got the different colours on either side and you can then very gently just pull these pieces up start from the bottom and then also from the top as well and as they fold up so those leaf veins all go up in the right direction. Try not to get it too much bigger because we're going to wrap the whole of this in an outer layer of the blue and we'd already got that to the good size but hopefully Now put that on and using your blade neaten off any of the blue. If you need to, if it's not quite the right size, size and you need to re-roll the blue, simply do that. But it's a nice thin layer of the blue right round the outside. Again, chop away. And there is your leaf cane. So I'm just going to force that, as before, into more of a square shape, just by doing that motion with my thumb and finger. And then we can start reducing this one down. Exactly the same way as before, pressing in whilst making it longer. And as before, we have enough here to do at least a couple of ornaments if not more. When it's got to a nice-ish length, I'm just going to chop it in half and then we'll see for the first time the, the pattern we're going to get. And it works quite nicely as, actually as a square leaf or even a square cane, um, but we're going to make that more leaf shape. So I will make it slightly smaller still. And I want this to get to about half an inch or just over a centimetre in width. So smaller than you'd think, because we're going to change the shape of this a lot in a minute. And when you're roughly there, look at the sides to make sure you're pressing the right sides in. And again, as we did with the petal cane, press down the sharp corners to make it more leaf shaped. And then I'm also, um, for this one, I'm going to press down flat on my measuring sheet and press down. So I'm effectively flattening off one end completely. You can see there, it's completely flattened. And then finding the bit which would be the bit nearest the stalk, I'm going to make that even thinner. And I'm going to press down that middle so I want a nice thin leaf shape. And I'm going for about three quarters of an inch, so just over um, probably about two centimetres, something like that. And then we will chop down and we will see the leaf shape that we have. And then what I'm going to do, in the same way as we did the petal canes, I will chop myself 27 slices. So nine slices for each of these three sets of um, flowers. And what I'm also going to do with each slice I chop, 
and again quite nice thin slices. The reason why I've done it in this shape is because it's then easy to manipulate and curl the leaf round at that end but it also looks nice if you curl the leaf round at that end. So I'm not holding it, pressing down on it when I've got it, I'm just holding it at the edges but curving it round so you end up with a nice curved leaf shape. And I will do that and curve each of the 27 petals in a direction and when they are ready and done I will bring you back and we will put them on our ornament. Once all the leaves are done it's just a case of adding them in, checking which way is the right way up and I will normally put a couple on the bottom coming out of the flowers working on one section at a time and then have another one sort of coming just slightly out of it And then some coming out of the top. And just work your way around, adding these in. Once I've got, say, generally sort of six, so two off each um, petal of the leaves on, I will then look and see at what space I'm going to add some extra additional um, pieces of bling, for want of a better word, where I'm going to put these little crystals in. So I know I'm going to put them in the middle of each of the flowers, but I also want to have them in between the flower sets. So because I don't want to put the leaves where I'm going to put the crystals, I will then take some of the dark blue clay. So this is what I'm going to use as a little point in the middle of the flowers to set the crystals in and also add some additional detail. So I'm going to roll up the rest of my clay and then I'll just take out one end of it. You don't need too much. And I'll just roll it nice and thin. It's probably about, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch, about sort of three millimetres in width, and then just cut off several pieces. So I do these in groups of three, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll them in balls. And then I can put them where I want them. So, for instance, I'm going to put one here, and I'll just put one, two, three of those in and then with the end of the cable needle I'm just going to press down. So I'm pressing these down because I'm going to put the crystals in which have got the pointed tops. If you weren't going to do that you'd want something flat so that when these spread out they're going to fit the, um, the stick on crystals. If you're going to use the stick on crystals after it's baked. Now I did a few of these earlier so I can put these in place now. So one was there and have one somewhere in here so I'm going to have this one further down. This way you can just add them in as and where you want. You can add more in if you want to. If there's a big place and you think actually I need an extra little sparkle in here, then add more. Also going to add them in the centre of all of our flowers because that's where the crystals are going to sit. And again, you don't have to add crystals at all. You might like the look of it without any crystals, in which case just put these little bits wherever you want them and leave them as they are. The design is completely up to you. I do like to have one just on the bottom, so I will give myself a bit of a guide as to where the bottom bit is. So I'll just set three on the underneath as well. And now I've got those pieces in place, I'll just have a quick look around, see if I need any more anywhere, whether that will do. I think that will do. So I can now add on the leaves in any remaining area to fill up the space. When all your leaves are on, then go around, if you say you've got the crystals like I have and just add the dots in the middle. 
And the last thing to do is to add the crystals. Because these are big ones, I just pick them up in my hands, put the point into that hole I have made, and then finding somewhere neat to keep my hands, breast down. Because what I'm looking for is to get that nice round around the outside of the darker clay with the diamond crystal in the middle. And I will go around the rest of the piece adding these in and bring you back when I am done. Once all the crystals have been added in, if you're doing yours before baking, just have a quick check around the whole piece to make sure it's fine. And then you can pop it in the bowl, ready for baking. And as I mentioned, I cover mine in aluminium foil. And because my bauble top was up, it's resting on the glass top and not on the pattern itself. And then bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And whilst that one is baking, I'll show you some of the other colour options that I've done. So here's a blue version. And again, I've used the blue with the silver um, leaf on it. And this was a brilliant blue with just plain silver leaf. For the leaf, I used brilliant blue peppermint and aqua with Windsor blue being the dark outline and again I used Windsor blue in the middle where the crystals are and this one I added some extra crystals so you've got two lots of additional crystals as you go around rather than the one and then the one on the bottom as well. So this one's a red version and this time I used the gold leaf rather than the silver leaf. The petals were done with white and gold. The leaf was done with white, gold and tangerine with a dark cherry red round the outside and again the cherry red was used for the middle underneath this time the gold crystals um, which give a nice shimmer and again in this one I added the extra crystals round the outside. For this one we've got the same with the flowers with the petals so we've got white with the lavender but I've got a bit of emerald green and on this one as you can probably see here this is the one where I use one of the coloured metallic leaf so this is the purple metallic leaf on a black background and it gives that nice shimmer and you'll also notice on this one I've only put the petals on with a few of the additional crystals and this time the crystals are a pink colour so that gives you another version without any leaves. On this one I've gone with the blue metallic leaf and the underneath and again over black but this time with the leaves and the flowers I've gone something slightly different so rather than have it all matching and have the blue leaves I've gone for green leaves so I've got green leaves the little blue um, petals and then some blue crystals um, that fit on and this leaf is one of two leaves I did in a very slightly different way exactly the same in the fact that you've got the same um, three-way color mix and put together so I had um, a dark emerald green mixed with a little bit of black to get the dark green, then into tropical green and then into apple green. But this time, rather than having that centre um, vein of the leaf being a single colour, I also made that a Skinner blend. So that long extra strip that we cut into smaller pieces and add into the square, I did as a Skinner blend. And the Skinner blend on that one was mint, apple green, and then into the tropical green, which ended up being around the outside. And that gives the leaf with that look on that one. Here's another red version. So on this one it was the red clay underneath with the bronze on top this time. It's a bronze metal metallic leaf and the red was um, the deep cherry red. But on this one I went completely different with the colours. So this one the petals got white with green. I've then used the bright Indian red for the little dots and then green crystals. But for the leaf for this one I did exactly the same as I just mentioned with the green leaf. So this is a mixture, the leaf itself, the main colour, is a mixture of gold, silver and down into a bit of white. But then for the Skinner blend, so the veining of the leaf I did a Skinner blend, went from white through to silver through to a little bit of apple green just to give a slight difference. And that ends up with a leaf that looks like that, which was slightly different. Just to show the difference in the crackle effect, all of those which I've showed you all had the same square crackle, but the very first one I did, I did only in one direction. So it was the right height and I only elongated it out in that direction. And there you can see you then have those long lines of crackle going through, which opens up 
a lot and gives more of the colour underneath. And again in this one I went completely differently with the colour version so I've gone for a pink and white petal and then that green leaf cane that I just showed you. So there are some more colour options to help you as you go along and again with this one we had the gold crystals rather than the silver. So whatever you want to do, whatever colour scheme you want to do, completely up to you. And there we go, there it is finished with its uh, finding put back in the top and that gives you just a nice decorated bauble with some metallic leaf and a few polymer clay canes. Well I think that one's it. All that's left for you to do now is to have some fun and go and experiment and make some of your own. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.